Welcome to today's episode on The Layover Show, where we're going to be talking to Mr. Akeem Tolson, my boy from Live Be Do. So I love Colombia. That's no secret. This South American country is like one of the jewels high on my list, and Akeem frequently goes there to one place in particular that I love, Cali, Colombia. So he's going to come on to the show, tell us all about his excursions, his trips down to Colombia, the economy, things to do, as well as people to meet and people to get connected with before you go down to Cali. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about salsa as well, too, because I know you didn't know Cali, Colombia is like the salsa capital of the world. So welcome, Akeem Tolson, on to The Layover Show. Akeem, what's up, my brother? Hey, what's up, bro? I'm here, man. How you doing? I'm well, man. I'm well. How you doing today? Man, I can't complain, man. Any day above ground is a good day. So they say. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. So they say, right? Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. Well, look, man, I'm glad you were able to come on to the show, onto the layover show, man, and check this out, man. You know, it's customary at the beginning of the show, you know, whenever I have a guest on, I like them to kind of shout out all of their spots on social media where people can find them and reach them. So if you don't mind, man, do me a favor, just go ahead and put it out there where people can reach on social media. Okay. Um, you can reach me on Instagram at live be do at live be do on Instagram. Same thing on Facebook at uh, live be do on Facebook. And also you can inbox me personally, Akeem Tolson on either platform, Instagram or Facebook. Okay, cool. And cool. I also, and I I'm going to give you have a, also, sorry, I have a, a, a no, YouTube channel. I'm just starting my YouTube channel. So check me out. Look, look me up. Akeem Tolson, uh, live be do. I'm still kind of working the kinks out, but if you, Search either my my name or Live Be Do. You'll find me on um, YouTube. I'm just going to start uh, sharing some. Um, it's going to be like a video diary type thing. Uh, my experiences in Colombia and other places I've been. Um, and, uh, you know, just showing people how to navigate through. Meet up with somebody, you know, kind of make friends with somebody. Meet, meet up with a local and kind of navigate through the... Um, the, the city or the town through a through this perspective or the lens of a local, not as a tourist. So gotcha. check me out. Gotcha. That's coming. That's coming. That's coming soon. Okay, cool, cool. So you're like your own video blog. I like that, man. I like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to give you an opportunity later on at the end of the show, too, to go ahead and shout out all this social media stuff as well, too. Just again, you know, so people can know how to get in touch with you, man. You know? I appreciate that. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you touched on one thing that I really wanted to talk about. You know, that's the reason why I brought you on. So, you know, I follow your travels, man. I've been connected with you for about maybe about a year now, something like that, or a little over, you know, yeah, just checking been, out all of your travels. Been, been, years, years, I remember like when you went to um, South Africa in 2018, yep. I think. Yeah. At the end of 2018 yep. or something like that. Yep. It was at the 20, yep, end of 2018. That's when it was. Yeah. So it's been, at, it's been probably about two years I've been following you. Yeah, yeah, about a couple of years. Yeah, so I've been hard not to see you. (laughs) Hey, look, man, I'm just trying to keep my head above water and trying to get these countries in myself just like everybody else, man. So I appreciate that. Yeah, but, you know, there's one place in particular that you went, man, that's high on my list. Like, I've been to Colombia, right? But, Uh you know, everybody understands there's different parts of Colombia, Bogota, Medellin, Cartagena, you know, all the stuff like that. But there's one place in particular, man, that, I love from everything I've seen and researched, and that is, you know, I'm going to say Cali, but I know a lot of people say Cali, you know, so I think, you know, just depending on who you talk to, some people may say Cali, Columbia, some people may say Cali, Columbia, but I know that's kind of like one of your second homes, man, so that's why I brought you on, so I can talk about it, so if you don't mind, yeah. man, you know, like, if, if you don't mind, tell the people where Cali or Cali is actually located, and how do you get there? Okay, so... How you pronounce it is just based on your language. So, and of course, in Spanish, Cali is Cali because of the the way the A is pronounced. Us in the United States, you know, it's Cali, you know, like California, like that's, that's, that's how we pronounce our A's. So it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but um, Cali is a, it's a, a city in, Colombia, 
towards the Pacific. So it's, um, you know, you got Cartagena um, in the Atlantic and the Caribbean. If you go right. towards the, if you head west, um, below Panama, towards the Pacific coast, you'll hit Cali. Cali is not, it's not right on the coast, but it's right before you get to the coast. Um, it's the city with the largest population of black people in Colombia. Um, and that's partly due to the fact that the Pacific coast is almost totally black. So those people come, so that's like the, that's like the nearest largest or the closest large city to um to the Pacific Coast. So there are lots of black people there. Um, so so like what's the best way to get there? Is it good to just fly directly in or would you fly like to let's say a bigger city like Cartagena or Medellin and then catch like a smaller flight or a bus or what? That's a great question. Me, I would never ride a bus um between the cities because of the mountains. <laughs> only no only people do it. People people do it. Backpackers and people, you know, natives, they right, do it. Right. And the locals. Right, right. Yeah, the locals, they do it. Um but the because of the mountains, because of the, the, the landscape, the bus rides are like 10 and 12 hours. That's why I say I would never Got do it. But um yeah. You can fly. You can. I've flown directly into Cali from uh, from Fort Lauderdale. I've flown. Uh, um, I've flown into Bogota. I've flown into Cartagena. The one benefit, the beautiful thing about South America, and I'm sure it's like this in other countries too, but um, since we're talking about Colombia, you can fly. You can fly into Cartagena. Wherever you find, a, if you want to go to a specific city in um, in Colombia, but uh -huh. say, say you want to go to Cali, but you find a a bomb deal like a fifty dollar round trip flight from where you are to Cartagena, right. you can fly to Cartagena and get you a flight a round trip flight to Cali for like fifty bucks. So it's oh easy. yeah, that's, that, that's good. Yeah, so it's easy to fly around uh, within. It's really inexpensive to fly around within the country of Colombia. So um, okay, it doesn't really matter where you go. Like you can fly directly into Cali, but I would say wherever you find the best deal, wherever you you fly into Bogota and you maybe find like a, a buy one way flights. You can buy one way flights for like twenty something bucks, twenty dollars, twenty five bucks, and just go from city to city once you once you arrive okay. in the country. Um, so cool. it's cool. it's really easy to navigate, really easy to navigate. That's one thing I can appreciate about um, Colombia. Um, and also the taxis and Ubers are pretty cheap. Even when they tell you, okay. oh, you even when they tell you you got ripped off, you're like, oh, really? Like right. <laughs> the, whole, the whole ride was five dollars <laughs> or the whole ride was three dollars. Right, you know? right. And right. when you when it's you not a rip off to us for three dollars, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I. Um, right. I got the, this, uh, let me see, when was I? The last time I was there, I flew into uh, Bogota and I've got like um, a lot of Facebook friends in um, in Colombia. But so okay. in every city I go to, like I kind of have a network and I was in Bogota um, just because my flight, I, I found a cheap flight to Bogota, but my, my um, destination was Cali. So I spent a few nights there in Bogota and I had a friend that, um, that I wanted to meet up with um, the cab ride was like a an hour long, and I spent, gosh, whatever I spent, it was less than fifteen dollars US. No, actually, it was like eight dollars US. Oh wow! For yeah. Like an hour ride. For, I was in a I was in a cab for an hour in a in an Uber. I'm sorry, in an Uber for an hour. And just to give you yeah. some perspective, a fifty dollar Uber ride from. My house in Virginia to to the Richmond Airport, a fifteen minute Uber ride is thirty bucks. So just to which is of, ridiculous. Yeah, you know? you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. Now that's one of the things that I love about those South American countries. How you know, like I said, stuff is just like mad cheap down there. You know, and and like you said, e even when they say, "Oh, you getting ripped off," it's like really, it was on eight dollars. I am, you know, I'm not tripping. Yeah, like I didn't feel that. I didn't even feel that. Like, <laughs> it, right, but you right. know, um, you know, and another thing I try to keep in mind, um, that which is why I also why I, I hang, you know, I try to link up with locals. Um, and when I say locals, it, it's not necessarily. 
I want to give you guys tips out there. Not necess- It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody you don't know or just some stranger, but um, somebody within your network. So, for example, I join expats groups so that when I, if I'm going to a particular country, I can try to link up with other other people from the United States. Right, right. So, awesome tip, by the way. Right, yeah. So joining X, if you're going to a place you've never been, a place that's unfamiliar, it's best to try to find an expat group on um, social media where you can get um, you can get the 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 perspective or information, good information from people uh, from expats, people who who are right. from other countries but are living there for whatever reason, working there. Um, they can give you some great tips on how to blend in, and um, they you know take you to some great places or just introduce you right, to people. Right within local people within their network so that you're not, you know, being, um, you know how it is sometimes when you go to places like yeah. Cartagena or, you know, you don't know. Like one time I went, um, I went to a, a, an Island and I linked up with a guy, he was a local and I didn't speak the local language. So I don't know if he was in cahoots. Cause he, I would get like, we would sit down and eat and it would be one price, but at the end of the meal, it'd be like another price. And I'm like, yo, you're right. supposed to be my interpreter. Like, yo, like, but um, I learned from that experience is, you know, I would rather reach out to expats. And um, right. And people that have been there for a while, like you said, and they can kind of give a heads up since you're coming because they've been there for a minute. Right, I get right. It. Yeah. And they can hook me up with locals yeah. that they trust. So, um, right. And as a matter of fact, because that was one of the things you and I talked about on Messenger, like you already said, you got a couple of people down that, that you want to kind of connect me with as well, too. So, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you might I can I can name a few if you if you don't mind, like there's. Yeah, um, no, nah, man, that, that's what we're here for, man. It's all informational. We want to get this out to the listeners. Bro. Right. So, I mean, I know I know uh, Cartagena, Barranquilla. Uh, Medellin, those are popular places. Like those are set up, they have infrastructure for tourism. Bogota, right. they, the places, those places have infrastructure, infrastructure for tourism. Cali is not really, it doesn't have a tourist infrastructure. Like you can go and you can do a city tour. Um, uh-huh. And there are some other things you can do. Like, you know, Cali is the salsa capital of the world. So of course, a lot of people go there for to dance and listen to salsa music here, salsa bands and stuff like that. But as far right, as right. like um, cultural um, cultural tours, there's not. I haven't found any structured tour for like um, for it to be the largest black city in um, or in Colombia, the second largest black city in South America. I just didn't find right. enough like. Um, a, you know how you can go somewhere and you find like a list of companies you can call and say, Hey, I want to take this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't find yep, I know exactly. What you mean. I didn't find, yeah. I didn't find that. So I was kind of, um, help. I was trying, I called myself helping some people put that together. Um, and that's what I'll, I'll that's another thing I'll be working on in Cali. So you, I'll be in Cali a little, um, I'll be in Cali often once they give us our wings back trying to help. Um, right, right, right. Trying to help build a cultural tour out. Um, Right, but one thing, one, and and, it, it, and it's funny you said. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I ain't no, no, go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead. Well, it's funny that you said about that whole cultural tour route, and then you touched on it earlier too about the whole. You know, it's a huge black population down there, and and that was one of my things because I heard like Cali is just rich with like Afro Colombian heritage, and that was one of the things I wanted to ask you. Like, how was your experience when you went down there? Because I know you. You've been there a couple of times. Yeah. And just from looking at your videos, I see that you are just so immersed with the locals and they're all Afro-Colombian. So that was one of the questions that I want to ask you. How was your experience? Right, right, right. So I'll take you into that right now. There's a um how I it's funny, I, I got um I got introduced to Kali on one of my trips to, my first trip to Cartagena, I went to Cartagena in 2018 and I met, you know, everybody knows Alex Rocha and uh, Freddie Paz. Yep. I linked up with those brothers yep. and they talked They talked about, Freddie in particular, I spent a lot of time with Freddie and he talked about his, um, you know, he, where he was born. Uh, he was born on the Pacific coast, Buenaventura. 
Um, and he, you know, he talked about Kali and he talked about, um, you know, just how, how rich the culture, you know, it was a lot of black history, uh, way more black people on the Pacific coast than in Cartagena, even though there are lots of black people in Cartagena. Um, right, right. So he kind of piqued my interest with that. So, um, so I was, um, I was chatting with somebody online and they mentioned Petronio Alvarez. There's a, a festival, the Petronio Alvarez um, festival in Cali, Colombia in 2018. Now I had, granted, I had just been to Cartagena in April and the festival that they were talking about was in August. And when I found out about it, um, I was like, I got to go. I have to go. So um, I went down there and I checked out the festival. It is the largest black festival in Latin America, period. And when I went, oh, that's dope. when I went to, um, when I went this past, um, I went twice this year. I spoke to one, I spoke to the organizer of the festival oh, uh-huh. and she was telling me through her research she believes it's the largest black festival outside of Africa. Oh man, that, that's that's dope. And what's the name of it's it? It's the Petronio Alvarez Festival. Petronio Alvarez. Petronio Alvarez. Yeah. And it happens in August every, every year. Every year in August. And actually we had a trip scheduled. We had a we were taking a group this August, but it's can't you know, obviously it's canceled. We can't, you know, with all the social right, distancing. Right. Um you know, nobody's going to go to a, 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 a festival like that of that magnitude. Let yeah, me, yeah. and just to give you perspective, right, right. Yeah. the festival brings in like over a quarter of a million people from around the world, like black wow. people. I went there and I was so shocked because, and I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I'm, I didn't find out about the, the, um, the populations of black people in Latin America until I was I was already forty years old. So this is still <laughs> this, this is so this has blown my mind. Like this is like literally right. blown my mind. Um, because you know you learn about the we learn in the United States we learn about the slave routes and you know yeah they went to South America, but. When we look at the media, when we look at um, Latin media, Latin American media, we don't see our faces. We don't. You're absolutely right. We don't. We, we do not. Right. We don't see us represented in their media. So it's easy for us to just like dismiss it as, you know, as a as a Pablo Escobar country or, you know. Right. You know, just a, a, a country. And that's exactly what we do. Yeah. That's exactly what we do. We dismiss it as. The drug cartel, right. or the Pablo Escobar, everybody looks like that, associated with it and all that stuff like that. You know, because I, I learned that that hard lesson, too, when I went to Cartagena and Alex Rocha, he took us down to Palenque. Yes. And, you know, everybody knows about Palenque. Yes. And you know how Palenque is the first um, first community made up of free slaves. Yes outside of the continent of Africa. And so that just blew my mind. So I understand exactly what you're talking about in terms of, you know, finding brothers and sisters that have just kind of been supplanted all over the globe that we just don't know about because we just didn't learn about that here in the States. Exactly, you know? exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I totally get it. I totally get it. Yeah. So that, well, well, let me ask you. Okay. So so what's the economy like down there in Cali? Though? The economy, I can't speak specifically for like what drives the economy. I will say that um, um, sugar cane was the was the was the major economic thing so of course right. it, so in other words it's a, it's another one of those places that would that thrived or thrived off slavery so sugar cane yeah sugar and, cane I, and I think big. alex told us that too sugar yeah cane. even when you drive in uh hello yeah i can, yeah, yeah, I can even hear you when you drive into cali you pass like massive sugar cane plantations like as you're coming in from the airport like massive yeah um, well, I shouldn't say, I don't know if it's plantations, but farms. You know, like when you're driving through certain yeah, yeah, places yeah. in the U.S. and all you see is like corn for miles? Yeah, so yep. it's like that. You yep. see sugar cane. So um, that's still yeah, that's still a big thing in, um, in Cali. 
But as far as um, yeah, it's a lot of places like that outside of Cartagena too, where it's just rows and rows of sugar. And and Alex let us know too that sugar is real huge in Cartagena. So I'm gonna assume between Cartagena and Cali, you know, sugar is kind of really it. Right. You know? Right. 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 But I was more so talking about like 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 lodging, right, right. hotel, I was hotel that. Airbnb. I was like when you went, my way to that, I was you know? working my way to that. Um, now cost of living. Let me tell you, you and this is where you're going to need to get. Um, I'm, I said I was going to mention some people who are out there. Andre Spence yeah. with uh, Love Crossing Borders is a person you need to speak to because he's a he's a next guy. Andre Spence, Love, Love Crossing, Crossing borders. borders. He can give you. He can. He's he's there. He's from the U.S. Um, uh, Tampa, Tampa, Florida, by way of Detroit, or how. Born and born, raised in Detroit, but lived in Tampa, and now he's in Cali, um, and married, okay. married to a local uh, Calenia. Um, and Calenia, Caleno just means a person from Cali. If so, if you hear that term, that's just a, just means a person from Cali. So, like, if I say for a Caleno okay. is a Ooh. guy, Calenia is a is a is a female. Okay, so he can give you the particulars because he lives there. Now, what I'm going to tell you is. When I go there, no worries. Like, you can literally, it's one of those places where money is the least of your worries. Um, I stayed, I went I went twice, once in January and once in February. In January, I purposely went and just booked a whole bunch of four-star hotel rooms just to give people um, an idea of what you can get for your money. Now, I haven't okay. put that, um, I haven't put that content out yet. Um, that's going to be in my YouTube channel, but I, I did share it on my Facebook page. But um, I stayed in several four-star hotels. There's the Sheridan, Four Points by Sheridan. Um, they have something called the Spiwa. That's their big, big hotel down there. Um, and then I stayed in a couple of just local hotels. None of my hotels were over fifty bucks. Four star. I'm talking wow. four star. You mean fifty bucks per fifty night. bucks per mean... night is what I'm saying. Fifty bucks okay. per night. Now, that's four star. That's if you want to ball out. That's if you bougie. That's right. if you bougie. <laughs> now, right, right. Because we got a lot of travelers that are right. Bougie, yeah, you know, so, yeah. So yeah. I wanted to start there. Now, if you're just a, a backpacker type, if you need the bare essentials, like a, a, a the bare minimum, like. Just a, a, just right, a, a bed, bed, a bathroom, bath, and a mirror yeah. so I can wipe, brush my teeth. Right. I've never stayed in a hostel, so I can't give you the hostel um, perspective or anything like that. But I've stayed in a hotel for I, it was either it was about thirty bucks a night, just a bed, um, and it was clean. It was real clean, f- uh, free breakfast, everything. It was really dope. So. Which is yeah, still that's not, not bad. That's not yeah. bad. And you can, they have nice, nice hotels for even cheaper than that, but that was as low as I would. You know, I, I need, I'm not bougie, but I still need, you know, certain things I need when I travel. Right, right. Um, right, right. You don't want to be sleeping on the mattress yeah, on the exactly, floor and all exactly. that stuff. I get now, it. if you're the backpacker <laughs> type and you don't need um, certain luxuries, they have hostels, um, you know, they have the ten dollar a night stay. There are even ten dollar a night hotels, ten dollar a night Airbnbs. Right. So, yeah, um, yeah. The cheapest I stayed was thirty dollars a night, which still came with free breakfast, um, security, uh, and it was clean. It was like a modern, like every it was a modern shower, modern room. It wasn't just some rinky dink place with roaches and stuff like that. Here in the United States, for thirty dollars, you're going to, okay. you know. For thirty dollars in the United States, you're probably not even going to want to sleep in a bed. You know, you probably, you know, you're gotcha, probably, gotcha. Yeah, you're not going to get this for thirty dollars. So, you know, so you talked about like salsa and all of that earlier when you were talking about the festival, and I forgot what what the name of it was, but I'll get it from you before yeah, we get off the show. And uh, yeah, the Petronia Alvarez Festival. So, did you learn salsa before you visited, or did you get lessons? Uh, there's a, su- surprisingly, I I live in um in the Richmond area of Virginia. I live um in Lyco County, just west of Richmond. 
There is a large okay. salsa community here already. And then on top of that, I'm born and raised in the Bronx. So I've already, all my life, I've been exposed to, um, to like, Latin culture, like, mainly from the Caribbean, like Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. Um, okay. And so I, I yeah, got, you know, I, I got I, I you. So it was just kind of easy, yeah, was kinda easy for me to pick up on. But surprisingly, there was already a large community here, salsa dancing community. Um, actually, all over the U.S., really, like you'll find like in the the oddest places, you'll find little salsa community groups. That's kind of a, a thing now. Um, okay, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah Cali, Cali is the salsa capital of the world. Um, no, it's not because um, it's not because Cali um, because salsa originated in Cali. Um, it's because. Uh, Kali loved. Kali claims to love salsa more than any place else in the world. Um, they produce the, the, the best dancers. Okay. Um, uh, you know they they spend. From what I hear, they spend the most on salsa music. They have the 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 huge the largest appreciation for salsa than any other place you can go to in the world, even Puerto Rico, even Cuba. Right. Yeah. And the one thing that I love too about Colombian people, how proud they are about their music. Because when I was visiting Cartagena and I was rolling out with Alex, because I went out with him a couple of days, you know, we went out this one particular day and we went up on this hill to this uh, monastery up on top of the hill. And we could hear people's music just like all the way up on top of that hill. And then even when we drove down, he said it's like a specific day where everybody just takes all of their speakers and put them outside on the porch. And then everybody just kind of gets it in and does their little salsa and all of that stuff, like in the front yard and the kitchens and all of that good stuff like that. So, yeah, some Colombians, Afro-Colombians in particular, are definitely some proud people when it comes to music. So I can dig it when you talk about the whole yeah. salsa thing and that probably being like the salsa capital, right. you know, down there in college. Right, so right, I get right. it. And another thing I want to say, I want to, that people may not know, salsa is, um, it, salsa music, is music that is derived from um, from African influence. So it's one of those things like, in, so it's oh, one damn. of those things to make it relatable to people in the United States. Like um, it's one of those things like rock and roll. Rock and roll was created by black people, but today rock and roll has a white face. Salsa was created right. by black people for black people, but today to, it's just one of those things that today, like like rock and roll, it has a white face. Um, reggae, right, tones, I got you. similar got you. situation. It has a white face, but trust and believe it was created by black people for black people. Um, and there was a there was a time it. when it Dig wasn't it. popular, but then once the you know once the um, the dominant culture, once their children started um, participating and partaking and and liking it, that's how it gained its extraction and its popularity. So this their, our our story or our culture is parallel in that way where um, we create things but other people, you know, other right. other people popularize it or make it um, make it popular. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I want I just wanted or, to put that on. Or as the popular term uh, is a Yeah, yeah, or as the popular term culture, is culture yeah, culture. Yeah, you know, yeah, something like that. Something like that. So Yep, yeah, I want to. I, I just want to give put that information out. Like you guys can do your own research and come to your own conclusions, but I want to put that out there because um, my passion. Yeah, because it's yeah, important. One of my passion yeah. is um, creating uh, cultural exchange between um, black people in the Americas. So within the black dias diaspora in the Americas, um, North, South, Central America, and the Caribbean. I would love to create cultural exchange where we, where we, um, we learn language and we learn uh, culture and history. We exchange history because one thing that I found leaving outside of the United States, um, just within Latin America, is they have held on to more. They have managed to keep more of their African traditions than we have. Um, I oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, and I didn't I feel realize how, yep. how much closer to Africa they were than we are. You know, we don't know that. We don't. But they are like, yeah, 
We're, we've been completely yeah. westernized yeah. over yeah. here. And Indeed. then, you know, not to take anything away from us, because we still created, even though we were cut off, um, we still oh, no managed doubt. to create no and um, create popular culture here in the United States. But, um, you know, you it, it was a culture shock for me because um, I went to Puerto Rico and, you know, Puerto Rico, you think J-Lo, you think all of the Puerto Rican, you know. <laughs> but when you go right. there and you find out, one thing I'll say that shocked me, and I'm not here to argue about it, a lot of people in, um, I don't want to create any, I don't want to offend anybody. A lot of people in Latin America, black, white, mixed, they will come, they will accept their, they all accept their African heritage. Some of them deny their blackness, but most of them will admit that they are, they, they are descendants of Africans. And I can appreciate that. But I didn't know yep. that there were, even in Puerto Rico, even yep. growing up around so many Puerto Ricans, I did not know about Louisa. I did not know about um, how much African influence was in Puerto Rico. I had no idea. So that's kind of what, that was the catalyst that kind of propelled me into Cuba and Colombia and other places in Latin America to find these, you know, find these stories and find, you know, at, you know, I, Cuba, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, not, not only just like find that. the stories. No, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, not only just find the stories, but get down there, immerse yourself so you can come back okay. and interpret it to us. So that, that's the one thing that I appreciate what you're doing down there, Akeem. And that's the reason why I follow you. Because, like I said, when you go on these journeys, man, you, you, you it's, it's like boots on the ground, so to speak. And then you give it to us right. like no holes barred. Like, you know, you'll, you'll video chat and then you'll show it to us and give us the real without the fluff yeah. and all of that. And I think that's one of the things that makes it real authentic. Hence the reason why I do follow Live Be Do and follow you is because, like I said, I like that whole appreciate authenticity. It, appreciate it, you know that's what I'm exactly saying? what we want to do. We want to give people, yeah. um, we want to give people the good, bad, and ugly. We want to show people how it how it really is. I mean, I I can appreciate tourism. I can appreciate oh, the indeed. beach and snorkeling. I love all of that stuff. But for me, before I even get into that, I want to know the people. I want to know the story. The the story is important to me. Yeah. So that's what I try to give to the people. I want to give the people yep. the story yep. so that, like, yo, yeah, it's cool to come down here and go to the beach. Yeah, it's cool to come down here and party and turn up. But the story is just as important. Understand the story and understand oh, how indeed. we're connected. Indeed. These are our cousins. In many cases, we might share the same blood because the only difference between us is a boat stop. But a lot of us. Yep. And you're absolutely right. That's yeah, the only so, difference of both you know, I just wanted to, you know, I just want to share that. I want to share that because a lot of people don't, a lot of people have been commenting and um, inboxing me about not knowing, like, yo, I never even knew this, this existed. So, um, you know. Right. Well, look, I right, look, check this out. I got one last question for you, man. It's kind of a two-part question because, you know, I got to get out of here and I know you got to get out of here and you know how it is, man. Right, we can right, right. travel all day. You know, so so I know it's a given that you'll be back. So I got this this last two part question for you. So could you ever see yourself living in Cali? And then what advice would you have someone for someone that's traveling to Cali for the first oh, that's time? That's a good question. Oh, 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 those are good questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep this short, but you you just added another hour onto this segment. Just on those two questions. I'm going to try to keep it short for you, bro. I'm going to try to keep it short. Okay, yes. The short answer, yes, I could see myself living in Cali. I'm actually working on... Um, right. That is my retirement prospect right now. That is my number one um, high on my list, my top on my list for uh, retirement because of the quality of life. Okay. Um, no, I would not Got go it. there, and I would not advise anybody to go there and look for a job there. It works better if you have um, income from the United States. You you live better. It's a better quality of life. Okay. Um, you get you get better healthcare options. Um, you know you can. Um, yeah, that's a great tip. Healthcare, um, cosmetic surgery is. 
big there. I just want to, you know, throw that out there. Like, if you guys are having a hard time, like, um, even outside of body body work, say dental work, if you guys are, because dental work in the United States is, is extremely expensive. Um, when you get Andre on here, Andre Spence, Love Crossing Borders, he can get more into that. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you guys, like, just the, the quality of life is just so much better. Like, here... Um, you know, we're, we're, it's a rat race here in the United States. We, we work, we pay taxes oh, on absolutely. our income. We pay taxes on what we spend. Uh, we have to have insurance on this insurance on that. And we're just constantly, constantly, constantly moving. I find myself in Cali. I can relax because I'm not worried about how much money I bought or how much money right. I have, how much money I'm going to spend. So that is a good stress reliever right there in itself. Um, now, as far as okay, somebody okay. coming to visit, <clears throat> so aside from doing this, yeah, aside from doing a festival, what else should someone the do for their first time, time going to, there? Or visiting Cali, um, I would recommend that you um, you link up with Andre with Love Crossing Borders, Andre Spence, and there's also Allison and Jamar. They're they're also um, expats from the United States. They have Ola Cali City. So like Ola, H O L A, Cali, C A L I, City, C I T Y, Ola Cali City. Find them on um, on Instagram, and reach out to them because they are United States citizens with uh, and they do tours in Cali. So if it's your first time, gotcha. Okay. Um, you definitely want to reach out to them and um, you know let let them show you around and and or just you know point you in the right direction. Um. Okay, yeah, that's cool. That's what I would recommend. I don't live there, so you know I can't give you particulars on neighborhoods. But I will say, you, Chippy Choppy, remember that name, Chippy Choppy. That is a Chippy Choppy. That Chippy is a, Chop. there's a that's a big mall in the north side of of Cali. If it's your first time, I would stay in that um in that general area just because there's so much to do. Like as far as like if you got a hotel, you can come out of your hotel and walk around and, you know, you can go to a store, you can shop. Um, there are a few restaurants and clubs around there and it's well popular. So it's like a, um, it's like your typical mall area in the United States. Um, yeah. So it's, it's got it. Yeah, okay. It's, cool. Chippy chop. We'll keep that in mind. You can feel confident about going out. Other places might be cut off. Like say when I stayed at the four points by Sheraton, great hotel, but there was nothing to do in that, you know, nothing to do in that area, in that immediate vicinity around the hotel. So, you know, there was nothing really to see. Gotcha. Um, okay. But I would start there. That that's those are the okay, starting cool, points. If cool. it's your first time, if you're considering visiting Cali, reach out to those people and um, consider those that part of the city, um, north or central. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So, look, before I let you get out of here, man, you know, I got to give you an opportunity to shout out all, all your social media destinations again for me. I know we did it at the top, but I like to do it in the back end as well, too. So how can people reach you on social media? Um, via Instagram, live be do at live be do. Um, you'll see, you know, pictures. Um, feel free to inbox me, DM me um, at live be do on Instagram, live be do on Facebook. As well, there's a Facebook page. I post there, too. I share stuff. Um, also, you can hit me up on my personal page, Akeem Tolson. Um, you can find me on Facebook or you can find me on Instagram as well. Also, I want to shout out um, Tor Moore. I want to shout out Sandra Alvarez, Tor Moore. Um, we've been working together. We've been linking up and doing um, – she's also doing things in, in, uh, with Afro-Latin tours and stuff like that so she's another one um you might want to link up with or, or reach out to to get information on uh on afro latin group trips yep. gotcha and i appreciate that well you well you know Kim, like i said you know your information was great man i appreciate you being able to come on and drop all those jewels on us and the travel tips and all of that and i'm sure the listeners will definitely love it man and like i said we got all your yeah. social media platform info as well as all of the info for everyone else you gave us, man. And we'll Ooh, definitely be pushing that out Can I give one more person a shout out? Two more people. Two more people. Two more people. 
Absolutely. If you're coming Absolutely. to Cali, reach out to Le Mutia. Um, his name is Juan Carlos. Actually, you'll find him on my social my social media, Juan Carlos Urrutia, um, or just look for Juan Carlos. And you know, I'm not going to try to explain the last name. He will teach you basic Spanish. He will teach you basic phrases on, um, you know, common phrases in that Caleños um, use Cali Spanish. Um, or if you just if you just want to learn a second okay. language. Yo, he has been like giving me life over this um, this, this uh, quarantine. And, like he, my Spanish is like has improved greatly immensely. Also, I would not leave here okay. without shouting out the travel junkies. Travel junk, y'all gotta yo <laughs> travel junkies. Uh, we yo, that's family. That. that is family. Yo, as a matter of fact, you'll see me. Um, there's a there's no. a, a, a Cristo Ray. There's a large statue of Jesus Christ on a on a hill in Cali, and you'll see me rocking my uh, travel junkies um, T-shirt at the Cristo Ray statue, bro. Yo, family, like you've been nothing but family. I bro. saw that. I saw that, and I appreciate that, my brother. I appreciate that. I got yeah, the pray yeah, hands so, up. I appreciate man, that. Man, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate your platform. I appreciate, I appreciate how you're bringing people together, um, bringing all of us together, um, you know, uniting us, man. There's no, no need for us to be divided. Like, yo, you keep it positive. Yo, you show mad Absolutely. love, man. Mad love yep. across the board to all the um, tra black travel influencers, bloggers, everybody. So I appreciate you for that. You like a, you know, you like a yeah, pillar man. in the travel community. Man. I appreciate that, Akeem. So I, I appreciate that. that. Yeah, yeah, man. I man. appreciate those so, kind words, my brother. I yep. do. So I that's do. all I got, you know bro, man. All right, man. All right. I appreciate everything. And like I said, we're going to definitely get you on another episode so we can mm -hmm. talk Puerto Rico. I know that's your first love, but I really mm -hmm. wanted to get this Kali out the way. All right, no problem. All right, but Have I appreciate you coming on Thanks, again. Thanks. Okay, you too. And there you have it. Kali Columbia in a nutshell from my boy Akeem Tolson over at Live Be Do. I love it how he came on and just dropped so many travel tips on us and some jewels as well, such as the Petrona Alvarez Festival and how it's the biggest Afro-Columbia festival anywhere in the country and also how Cali, Colombia is the salsa capital of the world. And then he also gave us a great resource in Andre Spence, the gentleman who has love crossing borders. He appears to be a great resource to link up with, you know, before you're going down to Cali, Colombia, so you can have an insight and perspective from a local. So if you like what you've heard, as usual, please check out more episodes on my website at www.thetravelejunkie.com. And of course, there you'll have more access to content, blogs and video clips, and then some of my planned group trips in the future. And also, don't forget to subscribe to The Layover Podcast so you don't miss an episode. The Layover is produced by me, The Travel Junkie, and you know my mission here, to connect travelers all over the globe, whether you're a seasoned traveler, solo traveler, or a novice looking for a good time or some insight and information. Thanks for listening to The Layover, and I'll catch you on the next show. Thank you.